How's it going, everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. Welcome back to Learning Game Maker Studio 2. In this episode, this is a special request episode uh, by Demon Royal. Um, he didn't actually ask for a tutorial video, but he did ask me how to do some save load functions, which I responded. But I think this is a cool little easy way to, to do some saving and loading in your game until you get more in depth and build your own save load, you know, kind of save system. This is a good way to get saving and loading in your game. Uh, without like a lot of work so here's a quick easy way to to save and load your game so uh, you're gonna need a couple of objects well you only need one but uh, if you want it to like say game saved and load save you know the draw text you could do that with another uh, object and we'll take a look at how to do that so very very simple all we're gonna be looking at is line 13 to 29 here so I've got a data manager which just handles like you know some information and variables I want to I want to keep. So you can do the same thing: create an object, data manager, or a new object like save manager or whatever you want to call it. It's arbitrary; it doesn't matter. Just remember you reference it verbatim. So uh, right at the beginning here, uh, we're going to add a new event, a step event to that object. Um, you could just attach this to another object you already have as well. But what we're going to do is we're going to uh, decide how you want the player to be able to save. Uh, and you set the conditions for that. Like for me, I just put, uh, so if the player presses S, it saves the game. If they press L, it loads the game. Just change this to work however you want. You can do keyboard check press or a series of, uh, like a combination of things by saying you have to do that. Uh, plus, um, you have to be meeting this object at this place. Like you have to be on the save crystal or whatever. You know what I mean? You can, you can put as many uh, conditions in addition to just pressing a button as you like. But here's the code to make it work, here's the thing. So, we're gonna be setting a global, and the reason why we wanna do this and what it does is basically, when you say something global dot, and then you put in information there, this is now a global variable. It's no longer, it's not a local variable or a, a variable that's scoped to the event um, or to the object, but now it's a variable that's referenced by the entire game. And it's actually loaded into memory before the game even starts. Well, like the first process that as it starts, before any of the other things are loaded, globals are initialized into your RAM. So um, by setting global.save right here, <clears throat> it's going to read through all this code. And even though this object, uh, we're not pressing S, it's, it's stored. It found that we're referencing a global somewhere, so it's saying, okay, right before the game starts, set a variable called save and set that to true. Right, so that's what we did with global. So that's the first line, global.save equals true. And then the next thing we're going to do is add the actual code that uh, saves the game. So we're going to say game underscore save. That's, that's it, simple as that, game underscore save. Then you call it whatever you want, use double quotes, and then type the name of the whatever you want to call your data file that's going to hold the saving information so save dot dat and then that's basically it so we created a variable uh, called save and we set it to true and then we actually saved the game and stored uh, save dot dat into the project folder so it, it kind of gets complicated if you want more information on uh, on how to save and how to load and everything go to just go to search uh, right here middle mouse click anything and then just type in save and then you'll get a bunch of information but um, where I suggest you take a look at if you want to create your own uh, the file menu or no wait is it uh... yeah you're gonna wanna read the file menu and uh, some of the other things in the help file right here for writing your own there's actually another one I was looking at a second ago. I can't remember what it was called. But anyway, type in save and look at all the stuff that you have for uh, saving the game. You could do in-game screenshots and all that stuff. Um, let the player select stuff. Here's game save. But you want to... Where is it at? I don't know. I, there was one. Now definitely check out the file menu and uh, some of these other things in here files and getting off track but whatever yeah so um, instance create layer this is for if you want to have a text box show like a pop-up that say hey game saved so the player knows the uh, so if you want to do that you can do this otherwise you can uh, skip past that that's all you really need for saving the game um, but let's go ahead and take a look at it we're gonna create a new layer so we have a second object you're calling it uh, calling it 
O underscore text confirm, and I created a new layer for this text box layer, which is above the instance layer but below a top particle layer. So I can still draw particle effects on top of this uh, text boxes that I'm going to be, th uh, but uh, but I could also put them below the text box as well. Anyway, um, so then we're going to say with that object, uh, do another control another variable save confirm equals true. So this is saying. Um, it's the same thing as if I went O underscore text confirm dot save confirm equals true. So that's the same thing right there with this blah, 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 blah. So I could have just done that. It's up to you however you want to code it. Um, but anyway, that's the saving and, uh, and so forth. Here's for the loading. We're going to do if the keyboard check press or L. So like I said, put as many different conditions as you want to specify when the player is able to save and now we're going to say um, just formatting it a little bit better so if global.save so this is why we had to say, uh, set a global because in order for uh, the game to not crash when the player presses L we have to say if if there is a global save you know what I mean if this is set to true if we if we do have save dot dat, then try to load it. Otherwise, it'll crash if we try to load it without any save dot dat there. So it won't load the game if it doesn't have the data there. So if the data has been saved, then when we press L, load that data with game underscore load, and that's pretty much it. So once again, at the text box, instance create layer, or wherever you want it, the location you want it to be, x and y coordinates, uh, the object you want to create. Then with that object, uh, manipulate a variable, load confirm equals true, and then close your brackets and set everything up. That's fine. Um, so let's take a look at the new object, create a new object, call it zero, uh, O underscore text confirm, or whatever you want. This will be the object we use for whenever we want to pop up something on the text on the screen and then make it go away. You know, So you don't have to have an object for every text you can just set up you know one object that you call with different switches and it does different things accordingly so at the beginning of this uh, thing as soon as it's created it's setting alarm on the create event so alarm 0 is 180 so we're running at 60 frames per second so as soon as this object is created it's it has a death in three seconds so it's created it's gonna do its thing three seconds later it's gonna go away so we have to uh, we're referencing some of these variables right so we need to make sure that they are declared on this object so text confirm we're gonna say uh, save confirm is false load confirm is false now we're setting these to false right off the bat because we sort of we need to declare them but on the draw we're using those two uh, variables as booleans uh, to kind of switch what we're drawing oh excuse me so um, when we save it we're saying uh, global save not true but we're also saying with this object set save confirm to true so we create it and then once it's created save confirm is set to false but then this still runs because it's created. As soon as it's created, it's set to false, but then we set it to true. What that does is sets this to true, right? So save confirm now uh, meets the conditions right there. So it's going to draw the text. It's going to be created, and it's going to draw that text. And then it's still going to mark down uh, 180 frames, and then once it reaches alarm zero, it's going to hit that alarm and destroy itself. Um, the same thing happens for load confirm. So when we press L, if there is a load, blah, 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 then uh, create that um, instance. And then with that, uh, set load confirm to true. So create this load confirm. It creates. It sets its load confirm to false. But then this sets that, that to true, which toggles this and does that now the reason why we did it this way is so you never have both of these on at the same time really i mean you can if you change it up but the way it's set up it's only going to be displaying save confirm or load confirm and it should be that way i wonder if i like spam s and l i need to just see what happens to see if it... now there's uh some other bugs you might encounter uh if you let's see well, I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Let's test it out to see if the save and load functions work. Should have did this at the beginning. Did I not do this at the beginning? I don't think I did. Anyway, so let's attack. Oh, I'm also adding numbers, uh, which we'll do another tutorial on. Okay, so look, we've, well, we've taken a little damage, right? I can press F5 to restart the game, and you can see it fills up everybody's bar, right? So we'll turn on our heel, and then we'll attack them a few times. Boom, boom, boom. Look, we've taken some health away. We're, we're both pretty damaged. Now I'm going to press S, and you see up here it says game saved. 
Now we're going to go ahead and do some more damage. Boom, boom, boom. And now you can see we're about to die here. But I'm going to press L. Game loaded. And you see it loaded us back to where we saved it at, where we just barely took some damage. Another thing, the bug that you will encounter, which uh, I was talking about, is, okay, so we saved it here. We'll do some more damage and whatnot. But look how fast the load game disappears when I press L. It's going to say load game, but it's going to go away. Load game. It says game loaded, but it disappeared super fast. Why did it do that? Well, because it's it's uh, assigning that uh, object, right, to display, and then it sets the alarm for 180 frames. But before the three seconds happens, actually in like less than one second, it's actually wiping the game's data and loading it, replacing it with save.dat that we... And in that save.dat, that object wasn't there yet. So it's it's not showing it. So you have to create some sort of out of scene, maybe instance creation code uh, that detects if the game has been loaded, in which case if it has been loaded, it displays this uh, upon game starting, upon upon game being loaded. So like, like I was saying, you would want to create your own custom save system to, to take this further, but... Um, if you just put like even like a few minutes, just a few minutes, you can put saving and loading functionality in your game. We'll go ahead and uh, restart the game here, take some damage. We'll save it right there where we're almost full, hitting S, game save. Damage them up, damage them up, get them to where they're about to die or whatever, or maybe we make a mistake, uh, we load. And now we're back to... There it is, guys. Uh, Demon, thank you for all your support, my friend. And hopefully this tutorial is helpful to you. Uh, always hit me up on Discord if you guys need help. If this is helpful, please smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. If you're interested in RPG Maker Envy tutorials, Game Maker Studio 2 tutorials, uh, first impression videos about new indie RPG games, uh, Game Maker uh, Studio 2 games, RPG Maker games. I do first impressions videos and beta testing and all kinds of stuff. Uh, I really appreciate... Everybody who's supported me on Patreon, I love you guys very much. Please continue to support me. It really keeps me doing this. Uh, without Patreon, I would be not doing this. So, uh, without a doubt, I would just have to get a different job. So, because um, there's like the, the tipping point right there, and, and we're right on it. Hopefully, we can get to the next goal. That'll make me uh, feel a lot more comfortable. But either way, I'm very grateful for all of you guys. And if you can't support me financially, thank you for watching. You're still... Uh, uh, you're still a drifter here on the channel, and I appreciate you for just tuning in and watching, and uh, hopefully you can make some awesome games and, and share them with people, and, and hopefully you can get rich, right? That's the goal, and, and make some awesome games, get rich, and then, and then maybe uh, you could uh, afford to toss some money to the people who's helped you along the way. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.